Hey girls, it's your girl Arezi and welcome to the channel. So today we are going to be going into things that you need to give up to get closer to God. Now, I'll see how the world is going. I have grown as a Christian dramatically, more seriously, in the span of two years. I started getting more like aware of things, finding out about like you know all these other i got aware of like different religions i wanted to you know get past the belief of just knowing just about jesus just knowing about god because i feel like growing up in a christian household growing up baptist you don't really get to when you when you're a child you don't really have that choice to be like i want to seek this and see what it is but you know what i mean like it's either jesus or get out my house so i ventured off into i wouldn't say like i actually became those type of religions but i formed those religions or i subscribed to those religious beliefs what i will say is that i did do my research okay and i found that they were not it okay jesus is the way a lot of those religions give false hope i mean literally i have done my research on it a lot hinduism buddhism sikhism the quran if i believe in jesus it's for a reason okay i'm not just going to be putting words into my mouth because i am programmed or something i'm saying this because i'm saying it for a reason god loves you but he's also He's also going to condemn you, which I love as a fatherly love. God is our father, our father of this whole entire universe, okay? He is the creator, okay? So we should put the praise on that he does condemn us. Because if we did have a father that allowed us to do everything that we want, then we wouldn't have a moral compass to live by. As I'm explaining, what brought you to this video? Is it because you know you need to get serious about faith? Is it because you see the things going on in this world and you know that it's it's time is ticking, time that that door, them gates are closing, and you need to tighten up? Today I'm gonna be sharing what I gave up to get close to the God. I am completely transformed. Once I gave these things up. And, you know, I did get tempted to, I will not lie, I did get tempted to go back and do these things. And it wasn't the same. And God said it wasn't going to be the same. Once you see his word, and then you step out of the word, and then you see what that reality is like, it's just like, sorry, y'all can have that. Y'all can have that. I'm good. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you all what i gave up to get closer to god because these things that i gave up i'm it may it may streak it may it may hit a bone okay it may hit a rock and this is not to trigger you but this is just the truth and if you don't like the truth then i'm not anybody who should tell you anything i'm just a vessel so i'm going to be used through the word of God. And this is what I gave up to get closer to God. And when I tell you my life has changed, my life has transformed spiritually, uh, physically, mentally, financially. Okay. This is real life. Okay. The first thing that I gave up to get closer to God was secular music. Okay. So I gave up secular music. So what does, what does Jesus say about secular music? Jesus says, Philippians 4, 8, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, Whatever is noble, and I'll put it on the screen. Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, admirable. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, praiseworthy, think about such things. And he is talking to Christians and lukewarm Christians and anybody else who wants to know the truth. I'm going to pull up multiple pictures. We have celebrities, okay? Let's just say... We have celebrities. Today is Friday. Do you know it's dropping Friday? New music, okay? Let me show you something. I can literally pull up my Spotify. I don't, I'm not listening. I don't listen to any of these people. I strictly listen to Christian. It's, 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 it's like, that's it. Christian rap, Christian R&B, Christian 
um, country, Christian, pop. If it's not Christian, if it's not dealing with Christ, if the subject is not Jesus Christ, I don't want to hear it. Because if it's not Jesus Christ, it's going to be about Satan. We know that he controls the music realm. And we know that when he fell from heaven, he came to earth. And we know that he is called the morning star for a reason, okay? So let's go when you immediately when you hop on Spotify, you go to search, you go to you go to music, you hit new releases. New releases, okay? Let's go back to the scripture, okay? It's going to be on the screen. Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. That means think upon these things. That means when you're meditating, think upon these things. Because what you hear, what you hear, what you hear influences you. And I don't, I don't think y'all understand that. And I clearly didn't understand that, but my heart started to change my heart started to harden when i started to listen to music about um drugs drugs sex money and violence okay let's get into let's get into how mentally i was going through it okay it changed my mind we have new music friday we have travis scott with a song called drugs you should try it we have sabrina carpenter now i don't know if y'all know this but she definitely sold her soul Years ago when she was on Disney Channel, who was talking about her? Who was talking about her? Now what is she doing? She barely has on any clothes now. You know what she's selling. Sex and in any and all and in all her songs, she's not talking about marriage. She's talking about breakups. She's talking about sad stuff, okay? None of her stuff is really happy besides the beat. We have all of these on rap caviar because i uh rap caviar because i know that hip-hop has a big hold and pop has a big hold on our generation right now why is every album cover dark we're not messing with the dark we're messing with the light jesus is the way the light okay i'm just saying are these things gonna help me get into heaven or are these things going to help me when Jesus says depart from me? Hey, y'all. Hopefully the audio is better. But I just wanted to show y'all Glorilla's new single, I guess it's called. Why does it look like hell? I don't know. <laughs> it's getting weirder by the day. But be careful what you're listening to because what you're listening to is going in through your head. And people think that music... People think that music doesn't control them. Why is it that when you listen to Billie Eilish, you get sad? Why is it that when you get to SZA, when you listen to SZA, you get sad? That's because music has a strong hold on the heart. Whatever is pure, whatever is good, think upon these things. If these things aren't pure, if these things aren't good, you're thinking upon these things and it's hardening your heart ultimately. I have to give it up. I have to give it up. Number two, I had to give up gossiping and judging. I would always judge judge people. Like growing up, I would always always judge people about, you know, how they looked or like their situation. And I had to give that up. James 4, 11 through 12, brothers and sisters, do not slander one another. Anyone who speaks against a brother or a sister or judges them speaks against the law and judges it. There's only one lawgiver and judge, the one who is able to save and destroy. But you, who are you to judge your neighbor? God is the only true judge. God is the only judge. So what you're doing basically is putting the authority in your mouth to be like, oh, I can judge this and this in person when it's just like, you are just a human. You are not the beginning and the end. You are not the alpha you're, or the omega. You're not the alpha and the omega. Who are you to judge? I had to stop that because I was turning my life for worse because bad things started to happen to me because I was judging people, you know, not having, not establishing friendships, ruining opportunities for myself. And I have to be careful what goes, what I'm saying in my mouth because it controls the trajectory of my life.
life and death and the power of the tongue is so true. And so just, and I also have to realize if I'm gossiping about somebody else, nine times out of 10, it's going to happen to me and somebody's going to be gossiping about me. And one thing people know about me, like I don't even have the time to gossip about another person. I would just walk away. I'll just be like, next topic, moving on. Because I'm not going to talk about nobody else. That is God's business, okay? That is God's child, okay? I am not above God. Therefore, I don't have, I do, I should not have the time of day or should have the decency and the courage to talk about somebody else's situation. I don't know them. I don't know where they come from. I don't know why they look like that. I don't know how they ended up to be that way. All I can do for them is pray for them, okay? If you're speaking against one of your brothers or one of your sisters, ultimately you're speaking against yourself because if if you're a Christian, we're ultimately one. We're under one God and we should move as one religion because you're hurting yourself at the end of the day. Because it's coming out it's at the end of the day, death into your tongue. Because they're talking about God's child. And he doesn't play about, just because he, you think he doesn't play about you, he doesn't play about the next person either. Influencers or celebrities, like, all of this is temporary to God. God created earth, air, light. Okay, getting into number three, clothes, modesty. Huge one, huge one. First Timothy 2, verse 9 through 10. Also want the woman to dress modestly with decency and propriety, uh, yeah, propriety, adorning themselves not with elaborate hairstyles or gold or pearls or expensive clothes, but with good deeds appropriate for women who profess to worship God. So in this text, modesty is portrayed not just in clothing, but also in behavior and spirit, focusing on inner beauty and good deeds. Okay, we can see that in the Proverbs 31 woman. Okay, she it's praised. Okay, why? Because she gets looked at from her outer, from her outer self, from her deeds, from her fabrics, nice, fine garments. Okay, not because of what she's wearing, not because of how much makeup she has on or how much, um, how her hair is slicked back or how much jewelry she has or how much she spent on a bag. That means nothing to God. Okay, let me explain something to y'all. All of these things that you put on a pedestal, these designer brands, he created Jesus to save us, number one, huge. And he created the trees, the animals, the plants, the ecosystems to be able for us to even eat. So it's huge if God says he doesn't want a woman to be looked out, looked at for her outwardly appearance. And that's true. And I feel like women these days have brought up feminism because they're like, oh, I want to be looked at for like what I can do. But it's like the scripture says that. The scripture says you're not going to be looked at by your appearance if you just do good deeds and dress accordingly. You know, we wouldn't even need feminism if you know what I mean it's everything is in the word like if you if you are struggling with anything you just need to get into the bible okay but I would always wear crop tops I wear short shorts I would wear like different colorful hair I just wanted to be like the girls on Instagram putting them on a pedestal ultimately came down to wanting attention and I realized that's not the good attention I want growing up into the grown woman that I am. I don't want men looking at me for sex. I want to be looked at for what I've done, you know, how I've impacted and changed the world, how I've impacted and changed others' lives, not my legs, not my shoulders, not how this is looking on, the back, on my backside. Like, I don't want to be looked at that. And growing up, my parents always like covered me up. It's just that when you get out inside of this world, you get so influ easily influenced by 
what this next person is wearing and how cute it looks and all this and this and that. But ultimately, it doesn't have good results because you're being looked at for sex. That's what it comes down to. Do you want to be looked at? I wrote it down here. Do you want to be looked at for your outer appearance or do you want to look be looked at for your inner, your heart, your genuine intuition, intentions, your connections with other people? Not by if your butt is out, if your boobs is out, how shiny or glowy your skin can be, how good your hair looks, how makeup looks. God doesn't care about all that. God is so loving, he'll take away your acne. He'll take away He'll take away whatever doesn't, your scars, your dark spots, or whatever. He'll take it away. That's how, like, I've literally prayed to God for clear skin, and I'm getting clear skin, okay? This is, this is, he's not a magician. He knows the desires of your heart. He knows that you want to look nice and dress accordingly, and you do want attention, but the attention you need to be seeking is from him above, and not these people who can disappear or who can die tomorrow. God will never die. God never stops working. God always is with us. And so what I realized about modesty is that I was attracting the wrong attention. I was attracting the wrong men in my life. And I knew that I wanted a godly man in my life. I knew that I wanted to be married young and that I wanted to honor the covenant that God said in his word. And so what God gave me, God gave me a vision of how I wanted to be in the future. And my future woman strives to be is business casual okay she's not looked at by her appearance for sex she's not looked at for a nice stand or a side chick she's looked at as a wife a woman of many great deeds many skills who can often teach her husband to level him up to so that he can be praised you know just honoring God the right and true way that's what I saw my vision was and so if you want to attract the right people in your life attract the right friends attract the right businesses attract the right Many are like, you have to dress appropriately. And I have to give that up to get closer to God because I can't be showing myself too much to the, to the world and then come back to God and to ask him why I'm going through all of this. And it's because you are what you attract. And it's too, it just doesn't align. If God says, if God says he wants you to focus on your inner beauty and you're focused on the outer duty, that conflicts. So you need to figure out where you want your life to be and how you want the woman you want to be or the man you want to be and why you're attracting wrong people in your life and figure out and pray about it. Get into the word and ask God, what can I do to prevent this? How can I change my wardrobe or little things like that? That will definitely help. So modesty is a big one Four idols. Okay. I used to put. So many things on different pedestals. I used to put people on pedestals of how they looked and how I wanted to be them so bad or like different designers, uh, that designer like clothes. I wanted expensive clothes so bad. And then what I had to realize is that God, God knows your heart. God knows your desires. He will give you those things accordingly when it's, when it's your time, when, it's, when you're ready. Okay. I've always wanted a bedroom like this. I've always wanted a setup like this. Like even when I was in Michigan, I've always wanted my life to look like this. To be able to look like this, all cute, elegant with my bun, my earrings, and go get me like a smoothie or a acai bowl or just, you know, just look elegant. I wanted this vision. I'm walking to it. My vision is on my vision board right now. So, but what I had to do is I had to take those idols and remind myself, God first. Why? Because he will provide those things for me. I don't have to idolize them. I don't have to put them on a pedestal. They're already there because God will make a way for me if I need them in his will, not for my will, but for his will. So if we go into the text, it says Exodus 23, 4, you shall not have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. This scripture reminds us that we should prioritize God above anything else, not letting material possessions or other influences become idols in our lives. And our phones can become our idols, our people can become our idols, or places can become our idols. Things we put before God, things we put before seeking God, getting on our phones when we wake up and not praying or not saying thank you before we eat because of the sacrifice, not, you know, not glorifying him for our life every day. No matter if we don't have any uh, food on the table, no matter what, 
we're still breathing, we're still alive, and giving him that thanks was to take it extra. Let God know that you are grateful and he will provide a way for you, okay? I have to stop putting those things on a pedestal because as a monotheistic religion, you cannot have no other gods besides God. God is a selfish God, and I just love that because it's so hard to keep up in other religions with all these other gods. You know what I mean? So that, number one, just makes it simpler. But another thing is that you shouldn't put any other gods before God because God created those things. God created the people to make the designer brands. God created places that you idolize. God created the perfumes that you want. God created the life that you want. And in order to get those things, he knows your heart. So by putting him first, getting into the word, aligning your morals with what it says will get you those things. And I'm not saying to do those things, just do that just so you can get those things because God won't give you those things because he knows your heart. But I'm saying that those things can't come before God. God loves you. God loves you. God wants you. And there is no life without coming to him first and appreciating those his love first. He loves you and he knows you want those things and he analyzes the heart. Let me pull up the scripture real quick. Matthew 7 verse 7. Ask, seek, knock. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And two, the one who knocks, the door will be open. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for fish, will you give him a snake? If you then, though, you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. No much more will your father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him. So in everything, do to others what you would have done to the, done them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets, which means that God is not going to give you a stone if you ask for a good life. He's only going to give you what you can handle, but he is a good father. And he even says here, or what man is there among you who if son asks for bread, you will give him a stone? Or if he asks for fish, will he give him a serpent? So if people know how to give the gifts to their children, why do you think? God would give you a stone. No, God is going to give you so much more. You just have to know where your heart resides. Do your heart reside in these idle things or do your heart reside with the God who loves you, who wants the best for you? These things are just things and they're temporary. So you have to put the trust and the love in him. Moving on, I don't want to make it too long, but verse number five. I had to give up going to clubs, going to parties, and I also gave up alcohol. Now, I don't drink alcohol pretty much at all, 0%. I will have alcohol if it's like in some food or something, or maybe a sip of wine once a year. I really doubt it, but I don't drink alcohol because Ephesians 5, 18, do not get drunk on wine, which leads to de debauchery. Instead, be led with the spirit. This verse encouraged Christians to avoid drunkenness and behaviors associated with it, urging them instead to live under the influence of the Holy Spirit. I gave up clubs, parties, alcohol, because number one, it's all playing with your spirit. God, Jesus gave us the Holy Spirit. Now you're playing with my spirit. You ever wonder why it's called wine and spirits? You ever wonder why, why it's called something else and spirits? Because it's spiritual. You ever wonder why when you drink alcohol and you're under the influence, you're not yourself? You're more confident than who you would be? I don't play that, so I just gave it up, okay? I don't, I'm, I, I've never gotten drunk to the point where I'm just like, I can't, you know, hold my own. But I still don't like that feeling of like, the lazy, the, the, the slowness. No, I need to be level-headed. I need to be sober-minded because this world is already trying to mess with me and I'm not going to be messed with under the influence. You're not going to play with my soul. You're not going to play with my mind. No. So, absolutely no. Also, clubs, parties, alcohol, they bring out Jezebel spirits. Um, there's also demonic spirits in there when it comes to, like, evil people, evil things, bunch of drinks, bunch of alcohol. Um, alcohol. It's something that plays with your spirit and is going to mess up. I feel like it messes up your standing with the Holy Spirit because you lose your sense of discernment. You lose your sense of awareness. It just had to go. Okay. Number six, have to give up junk food. Okay. 
hot cheetos takis um bagel bites all of that red 40 stuff you gotta go okay don't play with don't play with your temple okay your body is your temple and when jesus says that the temple was gonna rise up in three days he was talking about his body okay your body is a temple okay first corinthians 6 19 through 20 do you not know that your bodies are temples of the holy spirit who is in you whom you have received from god okay let's go back to the previous one about the clubs parties and alcohol if you are playing with the spirit that god gave you huh, gotta get out of there gotta get out because you're gonna be playing with by something some other spirit okay okay going back to the junk food so it says do you not know that your bodies are temples of the holy spirit who is in you whom you have received from God, you are not your own. You were bought at a price, okay? Jesus died on the cross. Therefore, honor God with your bodies, okay? This verse encourages us to treat our bodies with some respect, with respect. Recognizing them as temples of the Holy Spirit, while it does specifically mention food, it can be applied to the idea of caring for our health by making wise choices about what we consume, okay? We must, must be wise about what we're putting into our bodies, okay? That even goes into gluttony, okay? and greed overeating i stopped doing that i stopped trying to like conform to like a body type that i wanted i really wanted to be like slim thick which i i would consider myself as but i was eating all kind of way and i was like no there has to be a healthier route i have to treat my body healthier i love my collarbones and i'm not trying to have them disappear by just trying to be overweight because I want to obtain myself and submerge myself in these great foods, lobster, seafood, crap, uh, pasta, tacos. Like another thing about being a Christian is that you don't always get what you want. Um, just because you want tacos doesn't mean you should eat tacos because you know it's going to be above your caloric, you know, diet. I don't eat foods that I like, like that I want to eat every day. So mainly the foods that I've been eating, chicken and rice, protein. I care about my health. I notice that when I play with my health, I play with my body and I don't perform as well. Don't play with yourself. Don't play with God's body, okay? We are temples of the Holy Spirit. So how you're treating your body is basically how you're treating the Holy Spirit. Remember, these bodies are temporary. So however you're treating this, God will know. God knows everything. You shouldn't be on medications. You shouldn't be at the hospital. Like, seriously, if we all just take care of our bodies and eat the right necessary of veggies and the right protein, we wouldn't have as many health problems as, as we do. But because we're not honoring God, we're not honoring his word, we're not honoring the body that he gave us temporarily, we're not taking care of it, our health becomes compromised. And I have to give that up because I, I want to be a healthy individual. I want to be here mentally here i don't want the medical industry controlling my body i don't want my spirit being played with so that had to go okay and the seven tip the seven tip because number seven is complete is guilt okay giving up guilt why we don't need guilt because we have jesus christ who came down for us manifested god manifested jesus christ to come down for us to save us repentance repentance will save us we don't need guilt guilt is from satan okay romans 8 1 therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in christ jesus this verse reassures us that once we are in christ we are free from the burden of guilt and condemnation because of his grace and forgiveness okay so what you have to do is ask for forgiveness and go back to the road that jesus christ steered us on that means that if we mess up, let's say we mess up with one of these things. Go back to Jesus Christ, Heavenly Father, do a good prayer. Ask for forgiveness, Lord. I'm a sinner. I'm human. Renew me, Lord. Help me surround myself with the right people, with the right environment. Heavenly Father, cleanse me, Lord. I repent of the sins that I just committed. I'm not perfect. Help me, Lord, Jesus Christ. Help me, Lord. Forgive me of my sins. I'm not perfect. I'm a sinner. But you died on the cross for our sins so that you could save us. So save me, Lord, Heavenly Father. In Jesus Christ, amen. We don't have to feel guilty. That's from Satan. Now, what we aren't going to do is abuse grace. That's just asking for forgiveness and keep going down that same path. What we are going to do is repent and go down the righteous path.
the righteous way. Okay, well, those are the things that I gave up to get closer to God. Please let me know down in the comments of, let me know in the comments below what are some things you gave up to get closer to God. Let's just make this a whole community type of vibe. Please go ahead and watch more of my videos. I have a playlist over here or on the screen somewhere where you can watch up my watch the whole entire Glow Up Diaries, girl. We got like probably almost close to 100 videos by now. So if you have time to binge watch them or relax, get you know get your shows on or get your TV on, watch your Glow Up Diaries so you can start becoming the person that you want to be. Okay, because it's about time that you start walking into the new person. 2025 is about to be here and you know it's about it's getting old okay that's the problem it's getting old and it's time to turn the new leaf okay i love you girls i love you guys i want the best things for you to happen i pray for y'all i pray that whatever you're struggling with that you're at that you ask in prayer for god to help you and god will make that way for you okay he loves you he loves me and the only thing he doesn't love is your sin. That's it. All you have to do is repent and God will make a way for you. These are the things I gave up to get close to God. My relationship with God has been tremendously better ever since I gave these things up. And these things don't even matter to me anymore. I'm like, I don't even know why I was doing these things to begin with because it's not a big factor in my life anymore. But the devil will use these things to hold you back and get further from God. So you just have to realize, is this something I'm doing to, is this something that, what, is this something that Satan is doing to get me further away from God or is this drawing me towards God? That's kind of something that you have to think about in your head when you're making these decisions in the world that we live in today. I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to leave down some comments and give this video a like if you want more videos like this. I will see you girls in the next one. God bless.